part of the California Institution for Women, West Los Angeles. And you're right, it looks like a junior college campus. But we were not allowed to photograph the 15-foot-high fences topped by rolls of barbed wire and guard towers. Between 900 and 1,000 women are serving time here, including Patricia Krenwinkel and Leslie Van Houten. For the last two years, Ms. Atkins has been allowed to mingle with the other inmates and now lives with other prisoners in one of the many cell blocks that the prisoners call cottages. She was escorted to the office of Assistant Prison Superintendent Don Williamson, who was present but off camera for the entire one-hour visit we were granted. Susan Atkins is now 33 years old, says she underwent a Christian conversion seven years ago, and says she was lying when she said she killed Sharon Tate, that co-defendant Charles Tex Watson actually did all the killing. Watson himself has testified he alone murdered all seven people. What went wrong with you as a teenager? Uh, I think the culture, the culture of uh, the 19, late 1960s, my desire to really look for somebody to love, um, I just got deceived. It's like kids my age, 18, 17, 18 years old at that time, with the drugs and the drug culture, it was an exciting thing, you know, and I just got caught up in it, got caught up and carried away. I think everybody that was into the drug scene in the late 60s was really looking for acceptance and love and wanted, uh, they were tired of double standards, they were tired of hypocrisy as I was, and they wanted truth. Well, truth is, it has been said, it's relative to what you want, but there is a real truth. I just got caught up in a big lie. It looked good, it sounded good, it felt good, but uh, it's I kind of liken it to the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs where she ate an apple and the apple really looked good, but there was that one drop of poison inside that apple and it destroyed her. You know, well, with me, with the drug scene, it looked good, it tasted good, but it was poison to my mind, it was poison to my system, and it very, very much destroyed my early youth, my 20s, all through my 20s. You say Tex Watson has now exonerated you and said that you did not kill anybody uh, during those two nights. You, were you lying this whole In prison you said, gee, I stabbed Sharon Tate. Yes. I killed these people. Yes. And you were proud of it at the time. Yes. I think you need to understand my need to be accepted in the prison system I was very frightened. I was barely 20, 21. I was frightened. Um, it was a means of defending myself, of appearing to be really tough and really strong. Because I did not kill anybody, I had, if you can understand this warped thinking, I had deep guilt feelings because I did not do what I was told to do with my peers at that point. And so I had guilt feelings, so I tried to make up for it and make myself to be really big, something really hard. I glorified crime. You know, all that helter-skelter yeah, business? Or? Yeah, it was, it was all crazy, and I just I glorified it in, in my role in it. I didn't see the interview about a month ago or so, but uh, Charlie Manson was interviewed on television. Did you happen to see that interview? No. 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 I didn't either, to tell you the truth. I must have, uh, what do you think about it? Charles Manson. I don't like to talk about him. Um, he's part of my life that I wish never had happened. And I just, I can't talk about Does he control him. you? No. Thank God, no. Not at all. No. Some, some people are worried, though, that if you got out, that it would be this all over again. I've not heard from him or communicated with him in any way, shape, or form. I have made it absolutely clear I want nothing to do with him, ever. I made this clear seven years ago. I made it a matter of public record in my book. Um, I pray for his soul, and it takes a lot of strength for me to even do that to really be able to pray for his soul. Since you found uh, Christianity and, you, and you've 
talked to God and prayed to him. Uh, do you think he has forgiven you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, there's a song I heard some time ago. That the one line says, There is no sin that you could imagine that is greater than God's love to forgive. And that there's nothing that I could ever do in life that could be greater than God's love to forgive me. And that the blood of Jesus Christ shed at Calvary was as much for Susan Atkins as it was for Ronald Reagan. There's only one reason I want out of prison, and that's to serve my Lord Jesus Christ in whatever capacity he has called me to. And I believe he's called me to serve him as being Donald's wife. Susan, when people see that, what you just said on television, whether it's in Texas or California, some of them are just going to stand up in their living room and say, that girl's nuts. Who's she fooling? Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And I know that I stand before my God, and he knows my heart. And that's really all that matters to me. Two things, that God knows my heart and knows I didn't kill anybody, and Donald Lee Leisha Sr. knows my heart and knows that I didn't kill anybody, and that's all that matters to me. Would you admit that you've had some mental, some psychic, psychiatric problems over the past 10 years? And yes, I You can will, look back on I it and agree admit, with that. I will admit to you 100% that I was as crazy as a loony too when I came into this institution. And I know that I know that I've had a deep healing in my mind and in my heart in the last seven years. And You're coming up again for parole this September. What, how do you assess your chances this fall? Um, I, have no, I have no illusions about the parole board's position in giving me a parole date, and I do not expect a parole date at this time not from the parole board of the state of California. You've been in prison now for about 12 years. Yes. Do you think that you have paid your debt to society? Do you think you should get out? Do you think maybe you could do a couple more years? What's your feeling? Um, for the crime that I'm here for and for the actual factual part that I played in my crime, I have done far more time than, um, than I think I should have done because um, it's no secret my co-defendant uh, has exonerated me from actually taking anyone's life. I'm here because I lied. I'm here because I was an accessory to murder. As far as pain, there's no way. I have... I, I guess, Chip, I have two feelings on it. One, for, the, for what I did in the case, I've done enough time for my participation in helping nine people lose their lives. There's no way. There's no amount of time, there's no amount of money that can bring back those people. There's no amount of time or money that can pay the families of the victims or the families of the people involved in the case for those deaths, you know. Uh, and so I have, you have to understand, I yeah, have a I lot see. of, it's very painful for me to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't like to talk about it because nobody knows what I feel inside no, no. about it. You, do you remember it all happening, though? I mean... Vividly. Yeah. And I will be glad when the day comes when I won't be able to remember. And I don't know if that day will ever come. Maybe do you think Don could help you uh, oh. start anew and, and put that behind you? Yes, I do. I certainly do. Okay, we uh, brought along a uh, videotape of a message from him to you so we could show that to you here at the prison. Oh. So stand by and we'll get that set up for you. Okay. And I love you very much, Susan, and I have two things as a total commitment in life to get you out on executive clemency at the White House level so we can circumvent the state of California on it because I think you've been a scapegoat, and that's my honest opinion. And the other thing is I love you with all of my heart and soul. And God willing, we're, we're both going to make it. I want to see you free on the bricks. Is that the man you remember, the man you want to marry next month? Absolutely. I swear to God I love her, 
I'm in love with her. I always have been for 15 years. And she has been with me. And we want to get married, and I love her, and that's all, that's all I want to do. That's my primary commitment to life, getting married to her, having children with her, and getting her out of executive clemency.